Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers in our Lord Jesus Christ, the risen one. Today the church commemorates Saint Athanasius, a bishop and doctor of the church. The words from the book of Sirach apply to him. In the midst of the church, he opened his mouth and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding and clothed him in a robe of glory. Alleluia. It is said Athanasius was born to a very good Christian parents and he was brought up very well in Christian education and he specially understood and proclaimed the divinity of Jesus Christ whereas there, was, there were heresies and the heretics were stressing on the humanity of Jesus. Jesus is man and not as God. Athanasius, in those early centuries, stressed on the divinity of Christ. Jesus is true God and true man. We are all good Catholics who believe in that mystery of Godhead. Jesus is God. Jesus is man. Begotten, but not made. He is born of the father, but born to a human mother. And he is the same infant Jesus, born as an infant, then died and rose again for us and is now here and will be present again, once again, here on the altar in the form of bread and wine. We have come to meet him, encounter the risen Lord and receive him. Let us now humbly acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who raised up the Bishop St. Athanasius as an outstanding champion of your son's divinity, mercifully grant that rejoicing in his teaching and his protection, we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. When the officials had brought the apostles in to face the Sanhedrin, the high priest demanded an explanation. We gave you a formal warning, he said, 
not to preach in this name. And what have you done? You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and seem determined to fix the guilt of this man's death on us. In reply, Peter and the apostle said, Obedience to God comes from obedience to men. It was the God of our ancestors who raised up Jesus, but it was you who had him executed by hanging him on a tree. By this own right hand, God has now raised him up to be leader and savior, to give repentance and forgiveness of sins through him to Israel. We are witnesses to all this. We and the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This so infuriated them that they wanted to put them to death. This is the word of the Lord. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made a choice to listen to your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul by my side Should I face a mighty mountain Or a valley dark and deep The shepherd of my soul Will be my guide Shepherd of my soul I give you full control Wherever you may lead I will fall made a choice to listen to your voice wherever you may lead I will go Kindly rise with the gospel acclamation According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist said to his disciples, He who comes from above is above all others. He who is born of the earth is earthly himself and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven bears witness to the things he has seen and heard, even if his testimony is not accepted. Though all who do accept his testimony are attesting the truthfulness of God, since 
he whom god has sent speaks god's own words god gives him the spirit without reserve the father loves the son and has entrusted everything to him anyone who believes in the son has eternal life but anyone who refuses to believe in the son will never see life the anger of god stays on him the gospel of the lord praise you lord jesus christ my dear sisters and brothers in the risen christ should we obey god or should we obey man the reading that we heard from the acts of the apostles the first reading says obedience to god comes before obedience to men obedience to god comes before obedience to men but then you must be sure that you are really obeying god otherwise you will say when your parents and those who are in charge of you who actually are in the place of god and that's what we teach our children elders are in the place of god what they say is what god tells you so you must obey and then the children might say no i obey god i don't obey you that must be made clear let us see the context in which this statement is made over here obedience to god comes before obedience to men now the officials and the sanhedrin sanhedrin means the council of jewish officials the chief priests and the elders like the court they have come together after the resurrection of jesus and are in a way shaken in a way they are shaken because jesus died and partly they were responsible for his death and crucifixion crucifixion and death and now that he is risen his followers have begun to preach in his name and the other day to the beggar who was not able to walk was there waiting at the entrance to the temple begging for arms looking at peter and the one who was with him looking as though he was begging for arms peter said to him gold and silver i have none but i give you what i have in the name of jesus of nazareth get up and walk and he walked the first miracle that he performed with the power of the risen lord and all these people of the sanhedrin and the other jewish officials who were specially against jesus and had put him to death partly were furious now they are even working wonders in his name so they forbade him not to preach any more in the name of jesus of nazareth but the power and the strength and the spirit that these apostles peter and co who have received this part cannot but preach in the name of jesus they don't care for jewish authorities jewish officials they go on and on preaching in the name of jesus the nazareth jesus the risen lord and now they are all the more furious we forbade you to preach in his name and you are not obeying us and even you are making us us responsible for his death and you say that god has raised him from death well 
we are telling you the plain truth. We are plain, telling you the plain truth. Why? All these years, God has been revealing. And what God revealed has come true in the person of this man of Nazareth, Jesus the Nazarene, who came from Galilee. That he was the promised one, the savior of the world. And did you listen to him? And did you allow us to listen to him? Did you allow us to listen, to believe in him? Now, we don't anymore listen to you because God has directly revealed to us, not through you. You have misled us. You have misled all Israel, all the people. But this man, the Jesus of Nazareth, and his risen spirit, has told us that he is the savior of the world, that he is now risen from the dead. Therefore, Peter said, we and the Holy Spirit, we are witnesses to all this. We and the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Because we obey God, because we obey Jesus, the risen one, he has given us the Holy Spirit and he is compelling us, impelling us, forcing us to preach the good news in his name to all. Now tell me, tell us, should we obey you or should we obey God? What do you say, brothers and sisters? Whom should we obey? Now in this contest, after getting the background, whom should we obey? Obviously, God. Now today, coming to our context, we obey our parents, we obey our elders, we obey our officials. But the problem is, if they err, if they make mistake, and the church teaches us, we must obey always, except when the others compel us to sin. When they are compelling us to sin, you need not obey them. You are sure that you do something that you have been told out of obedience and that leads you to sin, you don't have to obey. And you should be sure that you're going to commit sin if you obey what they are saying. Then you don't have to obey them. In that case, you can disobey. But keep aside that. The more important point, the simpler one, simple point, let us make, drive home that message to us. That is, what does the uh, Senate stand for? The Senate in the Council of Jews, the Jewish authorities, I think we can compare them to the worldly values, who uphold the worldly values. And Peter and Co, the Holy Spirit, the people to whom God has given the revelation, we can compare them to the official teaching of the church, the church leaders, because church is the body of Christ. Today, church is teaching what Jesus is teaching. Jesus does not appear to you and to me in the human form, but the church is there representing Christ, or rather the person of Christ, whose head is Jesus, and church is the body. The world is saying abortion is okay. Contraception, not a big thing. Murder, fine. Euthanasia, mercy killing, perfectly all right. What's there after all? All that is sinful, it is fine. So it is like the Jewish authorities telling us, forbidding us to do something right and forcing us to do something wrong. What does the church say? Now, like Peter and Co, inspired by the Holy Spirit, what does the church say? Use your discretion. Euthanasia, can it be for allowed? Can we do the mercy killing, take away the life of someone because he or she is suffering and is asking, come on, I want to die, give me an injection, give me a pill, I want to end. I cannot suffer anymore. The doctor studied it very well. Can it be allowed? No. Abortion, is it okay? Murder, fine. Suicide, okay? So, here, obedience to God comes before obedience to man. The, the civil authorities or the place where you're working may compel you to do things as the sanitary compel them to do something wrong. If you want the job, if you want to 
be part of this company do as we tell you but god tells you otherwise how does god tell you god tells you in your conscience the voice of god is the voice of your conscience conscience is the voice of god when you do something wrong the conscience pricks you that means god is god is telling you my dear child you are doing something wrong you have done something wrong so obedience to god comes before obedience to men what your conscience tells you and how is your conscience formed right from our childhood the holy mother the church our teacher which is the body of christ the official teaching organ official catholic teaching organ official organ of the church that teaches us the christian and the catholic values teaches us all that is right all that god wants us to do and that we follow then we are sure we are following our conscience we are rightly formed our conscience and we are following and obeying god on the other hand bypass the church bypass all that the church teaches bypass just don't care for the church you do as you like i am convinced of this this is my conscience you don't care for it you don't worry about it i will take care of it your conscience is hardened you don't mind anything you are erring and perhaps because of your behavior you will lead others astray now choice is ours should we obey god should we obey men can you speak loudly and say the answer thank you may god bless you may the son of god who now comes here in the form of bread and wine jesus the risen one the same infant jesus help us and bless us to obey him and not to obey the world world in the sense the sinful world the sinful condition of the world world in itself is not bad the sinful situation sinful values of the world are bad let us not obey them let's obey god may god bless us brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the good of all this holy church look o lord upon the offerings we present to you in commemoration of saint athanasius and may witnessing to your truth bring salvation to those who profess as he did an unblemished faith through christ our lord Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. at all times to claim you lord but in this time of all to lord you yet more gloriously when christ our passover has been sacrificed through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom 
a throne open to the faithful. For his death is a ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly past with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Check this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church will spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter Paul our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Athanasius, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us, us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of a church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the risen Lord, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of the Lord in the blessed sacrament come let's share the resurrection of the Lord in the blessed sacrament eat the bread and drink the wine flesh and blood of the Lord divine share his life and his yours and mine for we are one in his design Eat the bread and drink the wine, flesh and blood of the Lord divine. Share his life, it is yours and mine, for we are one in his design. Come, let's share the ascension of the Lord. Blessed sacrament, come let's share our union with the Lord. In the blessed sacrament, eat the bread and drink the wine. Flesh and blood of the Lord divine, share His life and His yours and mine. For we are one in His design. Eat the bread. Shed blood of 
the Lord to mine. Share his life and is yours and mine. For we are one in his design. Grant as we pray, Almighty God, that the true divinity of your only begotten Son, which we firmly profess with Saint Athanasius, may through this sacrament ever give us life and protection to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Novena prayer to the infant Jesus. <laughs> to be with the children of men is my happiness, says the Lord. Jesus lived among the people as a friend and helped them in their needs. He healed everyone who had faith in him and came to be known as a spiritual physician. Who are represented as a child, he stretches out his helping hand to all those who have recourse to him. The more you honor me, the more will I bless you, says the infant Jesus of praying. Let us pray in silence for all our intentions. Let's pray for all those who are organizing various functions in this holiday season, all those who are traveling, all those who are looking for jobs, looking for seats in good educational institutions, looking, for, looking forward for good results, building houses, planning various things, settling cases. May the power of the risen Lord be with them I may infant Jesus bless all of them. Let us pray. O holy infant Jesus, through your life on earth, you revealed to us by many marvels your hidden power. Now, now bless us abundantly with your uplifted hand and graciously deign to hear the petitions who call upon you in faith and trust. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And the word became flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And the word became flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And the word became flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O infant Jesus, bless us and hear our prayers. 
Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. O infant Jesus, bless us and hear our prayers. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. O infant Jesus, bless us and hear our prayers. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. O infant Jesus, bless us and hear our prayers. Prayer to infant Jesus. O miraculous infant Jesus, look upon us as we turn to you, imploring your assistance in our needs and anxieties. Let your compassionate heart be moved to pity by our supplications and grant us the favor which we ardently implore you. Free us from all supplications and grant us the favor which we ardently implore you. Free us from all affliction and despair, all trials and misfortunes. Give us your support and the consolation, good health and happiness, so that we may praise you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us now thank the infant Jesus for all the favors we have received. O most generous infant Jesus, we on our knees before you have come to express our deep thankfulness to you for all the favors we have received at your hands. We believe, Jesus, that together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are our Creator and our Savior. Henceforth, we place all our trust in you. Through this miraculous statue, may your devotion be spread throughout the world, and may all people pay homage to your holy childhood and gain thereby untold divine blessings and favors. All praise and glory be to the infant Jesus. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the Lord Jesus be with you to defend you. May he be with you to sustain you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he follow you to guard you. From above may he bless you with the Father and the Holy Spirit who lives and reigns forever and ever. I wish you all a pleasant evening. That is the blessing for children. If there are children or anybody would like to have this blessing, you may please bring the children here around the altar. My dear children, and all those who are grown-ups, we are all the children of God. <laughs> Let's now listen to the word of God. People were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to the disciples, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you. Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced the children and blessed them, placing his hands on them. <coughs> Let us pray in silence now for all the children. These children are lucky, they are blessed. They got the chance to come to this infant Jesus shrine, to be very close to him, to touch him, to pray to him, and to be blessed by him. But there are children all over the world who do not have the basic necessities of life, who cannot think of coming like you here to the church, think of going to school, think of dressing like you, think of eating like you, think of roaming and having parties and picnics like you. So many poor children are dying of hunger and uh, because of poverty. Let us all place them in the hands of infant Jesus. And everyone, as we pray for you, for us, as pray for them in a special way. Lord our God, out of the speech of little children, you have fashioned a hymn of praise. Look with kindness on these children and on all the children all over the world whom the faith of the church commends to your tender care. Your son, born of the Virgin Mary, gladly welcomed little children. He took them in his arms, blessed them, and helped them up, held them up as an example for all of us. We pray that you, Father, will also send your blessing on them so that they may grow in Christian maturity and by the power of the Holy Spirit become Christ's witnesses in the world spreading and defending the faith, and all those unfortunate children may have enough to eat, enough to dress, enough to be educated, 
and enough to lead a decent life. We ask this through Christ, the infant Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Yes, eternal is His love. I will sing to my God, never ceasing. No, my life I will tell of His wonders. He's the maker of all earth and heaven, of the ocean, the seas, and all they hold. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Yes, it's sign of the cross delivers the Lord from all that is evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 